is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system. could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making it. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Well, was I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Yes, yes, yes. I do it It's Grace Levi. Get it, get it, get it. Now, we're going to get into, introduce you into Barbecue. Barbecue is allegedly the gang leader that has stemmed out of all of this chaos. Now, I will hope some of the um, resources I share with you will highlight his beginnings, but I do know that he was a government official at some point before he went rogue. OK, so we're going to get, get a little bit of information behind who is the man behind barbecue. OK, and this is brought to you by Sky News. This is a country that is falling apart day by day. We wanted to move from one area of the capital, Port-au-Prince, to another, crossing two rival gang territories. Sky News contacts insisted we had a police escort machine guns ready they cleared a way through it is that bad the officers were wary 10 policemen were killed here in the last week <laughs> haiti has been bad for years but this is a new development there is now no elected controlling authority at all some countries are actively considering sending in foreign soldiers to impose order Port-au-Prince is a seething mass of desperate people. 60% of the city is under gang control. There are over 100 groups, and that is who the international force would face. After weeks of negotiation, we were guided by a motorcycle rider into the heart of one of the most notorious gang-controlled areas. We came to meet a man known to everyone as Barbecue. See? This barbecue. Look, you're looking like an American, huh? Look right here. You see this right here on his chest? Do you see the Mason sign? You see the Mason sign? We're going to do a deep dive into Masonry. Y'all understand? I know y'all have a great understanding, but I need you guys to understand how far this web goes and its origin to. Satan in the Aryan nation. And I'm going to leave it like that. He says sending in foreign forces would be a disaster. He says, if I think we have an intervention, the international community is understanding enough to sit down and have a decent conversation with everyone. But if they're trying to resolve it with guns, I think certainly many people in the slums could die. And they will kill mostly innocent people more than the guilty ones. Jimmy Chirizia is a former policeman. He's, a He's under sanctions from the UK for his actions here. But he does remain one of the most powerful people in Haiti today, and he doesn't like being interrupted. Hey! Jay, shut up. What did I tell you? I'm doing an interview. <laughs> Respect. I'll do you with you finish. Constantly escorted by machine gun toting guards, he told me the threat of an organized hit on him. Don't they look like Americans? Look at the clothes. You can't tell the difference. The whole world has been literally fashionized. Okay, guys? So just keep that in mind. He has survived four attempts already. The blue building, yeah. 
Okay, we copy line with you. Barbecue is the leader of one of a collective of gangs called the G9. They are very powerful, but not powerful enough to take on the other 91 gangs. Everyone there is displeased the gangs has forced them out up there and people are displeased. Yeah. Everyone has to find food eat, but I can't cross over there. Every day I've got to find food, but I can't cross over there because the gangs are there. Yeah. So, so if you were to just go through here now, would they shoot yeah so barbecue and his men control their area police it and patrol it they respect me do they respect me i can say yes so what end up happening it'd be a conflict because you have these little groups of gangs that start to flare up because you have people who say look i need to eat i need to protect my family we're going to come together in the the poverty the chaos begets all of these little pockets of gangs so now you have these gangs going against each other they're claiming territory there's no government literally to control the area you see what i'm saying and it's the same thing that happens in urbanized areas in black neighborhoods okay if you're black you understand you understand this okay um usually people who live like in the country more rural areas the gang haven't really i don't think hit y'all as hard but the drug dealing and the kidnapping and the underplay of the corruption in the rural areas is very similar to what's going on in, in, in Haiti. And that is to my Caucasian followers who know what I'm talking about, could identify. I want you guys to try to identify with what's going on so y'all can get a better understanding of, you know, what's going on. And, you know, if you want, like I said, if you want to, donate to someone that you know but for that mass thing to happen again i don't recommend it because those resources literally did not trickle down to the people and literally beget this and all they have is internet and more social control and more social media influence you see what i'm saying so this is what beget begot this i'm just being honest <laughs> Because even when the person don't like me, I stop his business from getting robbed. I stopped his child from being raped. It's hard to explain, but this is like a castle, and inside, barbecue is the king. So he has his own little area, and that's how these thugs do in their area, in poverty, okay? But his enemies are only one wall away. They use those houses to hide and shoot in our direction, and that's why I have destroyed a lot of them. They use those houses to hide out and shoot. Them. See them standing from the inside of the house to shoot. They right there. Yeah, but they shoot them from the inside of the house to shoot. They right there. That is ridiculous. That is just like how the gangs happen in Newark. They be right around the corner from each other. That is ridiculous, y'all. I, I just have to be honest. All right, so we're going to move on to our next clip. You're getting the idea of barbecue. Barbecue is his foundations, what's going on in the area. Because when you hear the news, you don't hear none of this. You didn't hear bits and pieces. So this is um, Haiti prime minister resigns under pressure of gang violence. So the prime minister was being pressured to resign as well because he was under the covenant of Moise. And they said, no, you, Moise chose you. We don't want you. Get out. So this is him being pressured to go. It's chaos. It is. But the people fighting for their freedom. They're fighting for their right to have resources, to not be controlled by corruption, not be sold out. They never got anything from the earthquake. So imagine if you had, a, if we had an earthquake in America and literally you had nothing go to infrastructure, nothing, everything you did supposed to do for yourself. And you don't have no connections to the outside world before now this internet to be able to do exchange, because I already told you, we're not part of the European trend, the, the, the exchange, you know, they only way that money comes into Haiti is when they're buying the resources from us. But 
we can't really get but so many resources but from certain areas like Colombia, Mexico, certain countries that will deal with Haiti, that have respect for Haiti. This morning, Haiti descending further into chaos. After over a week of some of the worst violence the country has seen, the prime minister of Haiti overnight announcing his plans for resignation, releasing this video statement urging calm for the people of Haiti, saying he and his team will resign after the transitional consul is created. The resignation coming the same day, leaders of the Caribbean nations held an emergency meeting over the crisis in Jamaica. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken flew down to meet with the leaders, saying earlier Monday that Haitians cannot wait any longer for a path to security, stability and democracy. What we've seen in recent days again should remind us that the already challenging and difficult security situation it's now deteriorated even further. Instability has worsened in Haiti since the 2021 assassination of then Prime Minister Jovenel Moise and Ariel Henry then came into power. Best-selling author Mitch Album runs an orphanage in Haiti and spoke to today in 2021 when 17 members of a missionary group were abducted by members of a Haitian gang. There's not a lot of hope because you're right, the government has collapsed. The police, uh, you can't trust. Uh, one of the most notorious gang leaders is a former police mm -hmm. officer. But last week, gangs that usually fight each other banded together, attacking the presidential palace, the airports, even the prisons. Really Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? This is where they're a little bit different from American gangs. They said, listen, we up here killing each other. We still poor. What the hell are we doing? They waking up. And now the gangs has come together. And the first thing is to get more people. So this takes us back to why, and it makes, you can understand, like makes more sense to, you know, you're getting a background of why the jail was broken into. They're trying to recruit troops. I'm going to be honest. They feel like America and these most likely American control is going to come and seize Haiti because this has been the fight since 1986, okay, to get control. France as well. OK, and the way they're going to do it is do destabilization, destabilization. So now you see why this is happening. Don't ever think, don't ever think that this can't happen in America. We're headed down a path of something like this. I'm being honest. So this is why I'm sharing this with you guys so you can understand, start to see the mirror, you know, and really make an objective decision on your opinion based on these shithole countries that they call shitholes. Why are they shithole countries? Will we all judge for our opinions and our doings and our hearts? So, but I would like to get at least a different narrative out there so you can make a better decision on who people are before they're being judged. Okay, let's go releasing thousands of prisoners. Over the weekend, President Biden approved a military operation to airlift oh, some non-essential yeah. personnel from the American embassy in Haiti. And we know, um, according to what consulars were saying last night, a traditional consul will select and appoint an interim prime minister. But the United Nations has said just in the last week alone, 15,000 Haitians have been displaced. So Hoda, humanitarian aid workers are saying time is of the essence. Now, again, what are they trying to do? Not hold an election and have an interim council interim and council is not the original council it's not the people of of haiti to come in and make a decision who's going to come in again and we're going to be right back to the same thing so now we're getting into gunman targets haitian prime minister and his as he leaves the church because they want him out so i just want to show you how things get out there i, I just have to be honest you know i'm not gonna coat sugarcoat nothing to get a little wild and since America is being flooded with immigrants, you need to understand how people get down. It's much different. 
The embattled prime minister and acting president of Haiti says he will resign as gang violence surges across the country. There have been riots, prison breaks, and even an attack on Haiti's main airport. The prime minister's announcement comes after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Caribbean leaders to try and find a solution to the growing unrest. NBC News correspondent Guad Venegas is following this for us. Guad, what else did the prime minister say about his resignation? And right now, what do we think the next steps will be for Haiti's government? Uh, Ellison, the prime minister shared a video late last night asking Haitians to remain calm as he assured them that he would be stepping down and allowing this transitional government to take over the presidential council. Uh, this will have nine members. Uh, two of them will be observers and seven will be voting on the next step. Now, what's the next step? Well, they will have to select a new interim prime minister. One of the biggest issues with the prime minister is that he had postponed elections, and that's why Haiti hasn't had a president for years. So they will have this challenge as they are also dealing with the gang violence, right? So we'll have to wait and see how the gangs in Haiti that, that united or formed a coalition these last few weeks, how they will react when this announcement has been made, because it's the gangs that said that they didn't want the prime minister. But at some point, the gangs also said that they did not want that Kenyan peacekeeping troop uh, mission to come into the country. So yep. a lot of moving parts. The first step is to have this new interim prime minister, who, by the way, will have to work as fast as possible to finally have elections in Haiti. So this is what I want to highlight. From the president being in there acting like a dictator, what ended up happening is that these coups happen or something traumatic happened. And then you have the prime minister that's in place and hold up the elections. So as you can see, the gangs has literally got together in Haiti and they scared the prime minister out and said, you going or you're going to die. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. And this is why he said, wait, 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 give me a minute. We'll get out of here because they know that it's corruption. They know that it's corruption. The people of Haiti want the chance to make their own choice of voting of who is in office. Now, let's just get back into this assassination a little bit because we're going to unveil a little bit more. Suspect in Haitian assassination was former Drug Enforcement Administration sources say, okay? Yeah. So the same people who are trying to help you may be the same people who are trying to bring you down. We getting a bigger picture here? Let's go. And there's growing concern over the situation in Haiti, where rival groups are vying for power after the president was assassinated last week. Well, now we're learning one of the suspects in that killing may have had ties to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. CBS's Mola Lenghi reports from Port-au-Prince. Tonight, sources tell CBS News that a suspect in the assassination of Haiti's president was once an informant for the DEA, though they deny any involvement. Joseph Vincent, a Haitian American from South Florida, worked for the DEA on and off for years. Former DEA agent Mike Vihill has experience using informants in Haiti. Well, normally they're criminals. I would say the vast majority of them come from criminal organizations. They're unsavory characters. DEA operations, everybody back up, stand down. The gunmen claimed to be DEA agents during last Wednesday's attack shooting President Moise 12 times. Haitian officials are saying he was also tortured. An autopsy showed his arm broken and one eye gouged out. Oh With the country God. on edge in the wake of the assassination, a U.S. defense official tells CBS News a dozen Marines have been sent to the U.S. Embassy here in Port-au-Prince to beef up security. This as new questions arise about the man at the center of the investigation. We need a new leadership. Haitian police say Christian Emmanuel Sanon, a failed businessman from Florida, hired the 26 Colombians and two Haitian Americans to carry out the attack. With no, 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 no. I won't believe it. A failed businessman from Florida. They chose the fall guy. They chose the fall guy. His goal to take over as president. Haitian professor Michel Planchet told CBS News that Sanon told him last month that he was on a mission to replace Moise that Moise would be resigning soon. And he was backed by somebody. He was going to be the replacement for Moise because Moise, and this is just my, my, my opinion, 
one of the things that he did against the government who put him in place was not sign Haiti away related to the vaccinations. Soon as he denied the vaccinations, soon and the, I promise you, this happened. Right after that, let's keep it moving. But a former associate of Senon said that he'd never get involved in an assassination plot. I don't believe he has anything to do with it. Uh, he would seem to be a gentleman with a good heart and very good intention for his country. So the people who know the guy was like, I don't think he have anything to do with it. Yeah, he probably did have good intentions for his country and thought that he was going to be able to take over via corruption and being backed by allegedly someone connected to America. OK, so Haitian arrest warrant issued against Haiti arrest warrant issued against widow of ex-president Moise. Let's find out why the widow who got shot in the arm has an arrest warrant. This is how corruption continues to go. We're living in, we, we, we have a, we have the same thing going on, guys, in Haiti, a little soap opera just like you. So I'm breaking down the soap opera for you guys. Thought that American government was corrupt, crazy, and losing his mind. Yeah, here we go, it's all over the world. A E.T. and George investigator in the July 2021 assassination of President Juvenal Moise issued an arrest warrant for his wife last year for failing to meet with him so he could interrogate her about the case according to a legal mm. document leaked late Monday. The warrant is dated October 25 and signed by George Walter Voltaire, who is overseeing an investigation into the killing that occurred at Moise's private residence, where authorities say a group of heavily armed men shot him a dozen times and injured his wife, Martin Moise. The one page warrant contains little detail except to say that authorities are seeking to interview Martin Moise about the case. Mm. It does not state no, suggest any involvement. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. And we haven't heard any other developments about this as of yet. Um, did they interview her or anything? It got remotely quiet. It's just chaos, chaos, chaos. Okay. All I'm going to say is that I'm going to be quiet right there. The tail goes deep. Now, experts say that the gangs are very well armed and deeply entrenched in Haiti. Now, let's get into it because this is why I say just leave them alone. Let this country handle their own thing. OK, once we get someone in place that we can trust economically and start building infrastructure within, then we could be able to participate in commerce if y'all let us. Because as I told you, there's only a few countries that would participate in commerce with Haiti. And that is because our fight for freedom. We were one of the first uh, islands that regained our freedom through Haiti. Through, I mean, um, post the slavery. OK, Haiti was. And it's a psychological war. It's not only for black people. They don't want you to only not know our flight and our plight in Haiti because it's just black people. It's a story of strength, of resilience, of fight to the death. Never take no for an answer. No matter if you don't have any resources coming in, make it happen. Who would want to vitalize people with an independent heart with stories like that and you to get a deeper understanding of why people in Haiti are fighting? why they're trying to keep us out of this country, why we're the main mi migrants that come to migrate and they send us ass out first. Why is it? It's not just because the voodoo, okay? It's not just because it's top tier magic that they do out there and they know if people get that magic, they're going to be able to control some shit out here and I don't promote voodoo, but I'm telling you all the people use it your government, your stars, your, your, your girlfriend probably used it on you. People who you won't even think. Okay. So there's a reason. One of the reasons is why, because of what Haitian people can bring to the table. This is why I am censored. I understand 
Y'all hear shit come out my mouth that blow your mind. Like, where the hell? But it makes sense, though. They don't want that. So just understand I'm sharing this so you can understand our plight and to understand that Haitian people are just like the people of the world. We're the poor people of the world that are suffering from corruption, resources being taken, and a fight for our spiritual freedom. Freedom to be, freedom to have resources, freedom to not be taken advantage of. Money in the doll is my guest with the University of Toronto. One of his areas of expertise is the situation in Haiti. Danny, good to see you. Your thoughts on where we stand right now, this uh, upcoming resignation of Ariel Henry and the difference you think that might make? I think it, it's going to make a difference. This has been uh, very long in the making. He was supposed to have stepped down um, almost two years ago. And there's been pressure from civil society in Haiti and from other political actors for him to step aside. He was supposed to have impaneled the transition uh, council and he kept delaying the implementation. He kept uh, making it hard for them to do their job. You see what I'm saying? So this guy got in right after that president got assassinated and started doing the same, sh the same thing. And that's why the gang's like, we're gonna unite. You see how barbecue was saying first, oh, well that the gang is 99 gangs. And they got together. I mean, maybe a story they don't want the American people to hear. And they get his ass out. I think with him now finally supposedly out of the way, if he actually does step down, uh, we might see uh, a new or renewed attempt at trying to get the situation under control. That said, it's not a magic bullet. Uh, he was not the only thing standing in the way of improving the situation in Haiti. And now with no partner uh, for dialogue in the, in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be interesting to see how Canada, the U.S., and the international community deal with the impending mission, if they're going to be able to get off the ground, if they're going to be able to overcome the, uh, the other obstacles, including uh, the court injunction against the mission in Kenya. Yeah, the Kenyans, of course, will be leading a peacekeeping force of sorts, about a thousand police officers uh, and other countries will contribute to that force. But as you point out, there are constitutional challenges within Kenya itself to see whether those police will ever actually be deployed. What Let's pause right there, guys. I just want to read a little article to you real quick. Kenya promised cops to Haiti with civil uh, civilians didn't don't like that. The civilians don't want um, Kenya to come. They just say, mind your business. Just mind your business. We don't want America. We don't want Kenya. It's not a white or black thing. Let us handle our business. When Haiti Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced his resignation two weeks ago, uh huh, aimed the um, wave of gang violence on the Caribbean islands. Citizens of African country, 8,000 miles away, were play, um, playing close attention. It is because Kenya Haitian future has recently become deeply entangled in their own. In fact, when Mr. Henry resigned, he was actually on his way to from home from Nairobi. The guy is from Nairobi. Oh, shit. I thought that he was Haitian. Where he's been to sign an agreement with Kenya government to deploy 1,000 police officers to Haiti. Oh, okay. I do apologize. He's Haitian. Okay, I'm like, what? So he had a deal with Nairobi to go bring some police over. He says, Mr. Henry called a brave act of solidarity with the people of Haiti and Kenya government said the plan was a bigger call for humanity in support of the brother nation in Africa diaspora. But many Kenyans don't see it that way. Since the deploy plans was first announced last year, it has been intensely controversy with critics arguing it is reckless with Kenyan lives um, and not in the country's natural interests. Kenyans like, we don't want to have nothing to do with that. No, no, no. Now, Mr. Henry resignation has put the deployment temporarily on ice, sparking newly debate hear about what should and should not be done, dividing the country in, in, in revenue in affairs of the nation, nation in crisis. Okay, so this is what you're hearing. Even the Kenyans like, no, let, let them handle their business and this is what we want. But again, people, us, regular people, no matter if you're Haitian, white, black, whatever, you can't rule yourself. You can't make a decision for yourself. We're going to send government officials to oversee this. Now we have to understand where's the hand of this worldwide government is coming from.
okay? We this, I'm not kind of throwing hints because it has to do with our release on the Lost Eye Archives, okay? I'm going to keep on bringing it up. Shout out to our new sister channel, the Lost Archives. I, what do you think needs to happen here to try and stabilize the situation in Haiti? I don't think anybody knows exactly what will work. Uh, there's a lot of concerns about what won't work and what we've seen in the past. And there are, of course, uh, real risks with any operation like this. Uh, Kenyan police is not experiencing this kind of operation. They participated in some missions in the past. Um, but the idea that a thousand Kenyan uh, police officers, even with the help of another thousand um, of components of different countries in the Caribbean, are going to be able to uh, fly into Haiti and tempt down the situation, I think is, is, is a little fanciful. Um, they're likely to encounter a very difficult situation on the ground. Uh, these armed groups are very well armed and have been uh, engaged in violent uh, action for, for some time. Now they're veterans. They know the country very well. They know mm -hmm. the, the streets, the, the city. Uh, they're very well entrenched. Any foreign force is going to find it very hard to dislodge them, just like the Brazilian-led mission did back in 2004. Exactly. They're telling them, don't go in because you're not going to come out. I'm just being honest. So they have a good circumference of the of the land. They were sitting there fighting each other, acting crazy, shooting each other from right across broken houses. And now they have united. So let's keep the broadcast moving because we're going to get towards the end of the broadcast where you're going to see what the American people have to say, um, as well as you're going to get a breakdown of barbecue, a little get to know him a little bit more. OK, so Haitian unrest, people have to try to survive on a daily basis. So this is a legend interview with someone from Haiti, Haiti. And let's hear what he has to say with boots on the ground. Now, my um, my boots on the ground is actually my grandmother, but she's out here right now. And I have to have a deep talk to her about, you know, what's going on because we do have property things out there. And she's saying that in the area that her home is at, it's okay. You know, she is not in her area. I showed you specifically where Port-au-Prince is and how big the land is, it's not that little, okay? So this is not happening all over, it's just happening in the capital. So essentially here today, uh, people are waking up um, uh, in a state of emergency and under curfew as announced by the Haitian government uh, last night uh, in the wake of uh, the violence waged by the gangs over the last few days. And Harold, is the situation calmer now that the state of emergency is coming in, or is there still fighting? Well, for uh, good parts of the city, it's eerily calm, but there are reports of looting happening in some uh, parts of the city, and uh, it's uh, essentially gang-backed violence uh, hmm. in order to try and topple the government. Right. And, of course, we've heard the individual behind this, uh, Jimmy uh, Cherizier. Just give us a sense uh, from you, Harold, who this individual is. You'll know that our chief correspondent, Stuart Ramsey, interviewed him uh, last year. But talk to us about who he is and, and how much support he has from ordinary Haitians. So um, Jimmy Cherizier uh, Barbecue is a former police officer uh, turned a notorious gang leader uh, who has uh, been uh, uh, pretty much a staple in terms of gang activities in the last few years. Uh, one of the perhaps sadly uh, highlights of his career has, was in uh, October, uh, September, October of 2022, when he essentially blocked the country for uh, roughly seven weeks uh, by uh, cutting access to the main oil terminal, mm -hmm. uh, literally putting the country to its knees. Mm. Uh, and how was he treated as a result of that? Did the authorities go after him? Were the, were the people in support? Because he makes, it makes it seem, and certainly in the reporting that I've seen, that he's, when he spoke to uh, Stuart Ramsey, that he is in some way a state within, within a state. He's giving out aid to the people that need it because the state is not doing it. Mm. You see? Well, essentially, he called himself a revolutionary where uh, he's promising to take down the, the system, or so he claims. Uh, but essentially, uh, for most folks here, they've seen waves and waves of violence waged by his, his, his uh, gangs. And uh, as of this week, he claims to have united all the gangs, even the rival ones, in mm. order to try and tackle the, uh, the Prime Minister Ariel Henry.
OK, we're going to talk about him in a moment, but that's interesting that he thinks he's united all the gangs because we've had these jailbreaks, haven't we? 4,000 inmates released. I mean, can we safely assume now that if they weren't barbecue supporters before, those guys he's released are now part of his gang? Well, that remains unclear. Uh, obviously, uh, they're still trying to sort out the whereabouts of all these inmates that have fled. Uh, it, the official number is over 3,600, but there are at least two jails that have been broken into. Uh, so the real number is probably considerably more. Uh, as it is right now, it's still very early to determine their, their next steps. All right. So this is more clarification of what's going on, how the gangs is united in clarification of why the the jail was broken into and it's because they wanted that prime minister out that literally was in there for three years i mean they, yeah because um moise died in 2021 and the prime minister has been holding up the election again this is why the chaos is breaking out out there so now we're going to get into the politicians are the criminal says Haitian gang boss. That's Al Jazeera again. But what I will do is I'm going to get into who are the five gang leaders ruling Haiti. Okay. So let's just get into there of who are the five gang leaders that's ruling Haiti. I want to, let's get this. Haiti's gangs control the country, and they know it. Haiti has no government, its police is on the run, and there is no sign of international support. But who are the gang leaders behind this crisis? They used to rely on support from Haiti's political and business elites who use them as muscle, but they have now made fortunes of their own through extortion, kidnapping, and drug trafficking. Today, World of Crime focuses on five Haitian gang leaders looking to become politicians who may determine the country's future. And that's what they're I'm trying Chris to do. They're trying to create their own government with all of these gangs, and this is going to be a problem. Now, as a Haitian person, and you know, that has some common sense, I don't think that this is a good idea for these gangs, for people who committed crimes to come in and think they're going to set up a government. I don't agree with this. I don't. Stolby, and this is World of Crime. It's wise in any walk of life to have a backup plan. Ezo worked out early that if a life of crime ended up being bad for his health, he could try the music industry. Ezo has released a number of rap songs on YouTube, revealing the misery in which people live in the village de Dieu neighborhood that he controls. I told y'all, I told y'all, they on the internet, they on YouTube, they making videos. It, the internet has poisoned Haiti's mind. He has railed against the state of hospitals and schools, lamented that young people were leaving Haiti, and blamed the government for these problems. YouTube even sent Ezo a plaque to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. Amid the immediate controversy, the platform banned him days later. But despite his musical complaining, Ezo is to blame for a good share of Haiti's current chaos. He may even be the most powerful gang leader in the country. He controls sea access to different parts of Port-au-Prince, including his Village de Dieu neighborhood. This has allowed him to develop a complex drug trafficking and weapon smuggling network with connections to the U.S. and Latin America. In 2020... With connections to the U.S. and Latin America, okay? Because the next thing that I'm going to show you is how the guns is getting into Haiti because the guns are not manufactured there. In 2023, he was sanctioned by the U.S. and the EU for rape, kidnapping, extortion, hostage-taking, and more. His five-second gang took over Haiti's Supreme Court building for weeks on end in 2022 in one of the more symbolic events of the Haitian gang war. Prior to the current chaos, Isa was allied with a gang leader known as T. Gabriel and the GPEP coalition. His current allegiances are unclear. He has willingly sold weapons to many other gangs, so he does stand to profit from continued chaos. So he is the one that's getting guns into Haiti. And his connections is to where? Brazil and America. And despite the ban, he regularly releases songs on YouTube on new accounts. If you've heard of one Haitian gang leader, it's almost certainly Bob. 
The former police officer is seen as the most powerful man in Haiti, and he has worked very hard to become so. Haitian observers do say there are more influential gang figures than barbecue, but none who seek the limelight as constantly as he does. Around the slums he controls in the capital, Port-au-Prince, paintings compare barbecue to Cuban freedom fighter Che Guevara. In interviews, he says he admires Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. But Martin Luther King didn't burn people alive in their homes. He was once a police officer, but was expelled in 2018 for his involvement in a massacre in the slum of La Saline, in which over 70 people were killed. The gang alliance he controls, known as G9, has thousands of members who control large parts of Port-au-Prince and the surrounding areas. A close ally of former Haitian president Jovenel Moise, who was assassinated in 2021, Barbecue has actively sought the spotlight. He invites journalists to his compound or to walk with him surrounded by bodyguards as he is greeted by locals. Barbecue has cultivated a cult of personality among certain Haitian residents by distributing food and supplies. But this media coverage has helped him establish himself as a de facto politician in Haiti. But his loyalty is fickle. He has used his troops to paralyze much of the country, either escalating violence against rivals or blockading Haiti's main port and fuel terminal to prevent supplies from coming in. He's trying to take over and be the next president. The Haitian government has repeatedly paid him off but he does not keep his promises of peace for long. And as you see, the Haitian government put, repeatedly paid him off. Why are you paying off a criminal? Why? Because you, you're trying to get him to ally with you, align with you, and he won't. He's just stealing the money. In 2023, Barbecue's G9 made a pact with their rivals, a group of gangs known as the g and created a larger group known as Vive Ensemble, or Live Together. This larger alliance claims to be ready to fight a planned deployment of international peacekeepers from Kenya. Vivant Somme then set its sights on removing interim Prime Minister Ariel Henry from power. Starting in February 2024, thousands of prisoners were freed, police stations and the airport have been attacked, tens of thousands of people have been killed, injured or displaced. And finally, Ariel Henry did resign, leaving Haiti even more leaderless. Barbecue has gone from being a gang leader to Haiti's main warlord. For several years, T. Gabriel was Barbecue's blood rival. While Haiti has many gangs, the rivalry between G9 and GPEP was blamed for much of the constant violence that has turned Port-au-Prince into a war zone. But T. Gabriel was always a canny operator. He came up as the leader of a gang named Nan Brooklyn in the neighborhood of Cité Soleil. Unlike Barbecue, who had close connections to the ruling party in government at the time, T. Gabriel was being paid by his opposition, making them natural enemies. As Barbecue expanded to become leader of the G9 alliance, T. Gabriel did the same with gangs around Cité Soleil to form the GPEP. He was incredibly aggressive in his war to take territory from G9. In 2022 and 2023, he showed no fear of firebombing people's houses or surrounding a hospital, cutting it off from aid. So you see, he was trying to take the land from this um, barbecue. He like, oh, barbecue ain't going to be taking over stuff. And because these people were, you know, they wasn't talking. GPEP barricaded entire parts of Port-au-Prince, treating them as fortresses where nobody could enter without permission. However, things change. Di Gabriel and Barbecue both recognized the threat of an international force potentially entering the country. Mm -hmm. In 2023, they formed the Vive Ensemble Coalition and showed their displeasure, leading to an escalation of violence that has completely paralyzed the country. And that's what made me know that Barbecue ain't doing things right because if you're going to come in and you used to be a police official, you'll come bring some order. It's no, it's not, it's not total order. It's no order, but they're trying to unite. This is what's going on in Haiti. Vitelum Innocent is the only Haitian gang leader to be on the FBI's most wanted fugitives list. 
The U.S. government has put out a $2 million bounty for information leading to his arrest. But who is the man worth such attention? He has ties to Florida, y'all. Vitalom is believed to have been partially responsible for the sensational kidnapping of 17 American and Canadian missionaries in Haiti. While kidnappings are rampant on the island, and although the missionaries escaped, this incident drove home the risks posed by Haitian gangs to American interests. While the kidnapping was carried out by a gang known as 400 Mawozo, Vitalom Innocent has been accused of being its orchestrator. He was also indicted in the US for his role in the murder of American citizen Marie Odette Franklin and the kidnapping of her husband Jean in October 2022. Now you want to keep this in mind. These people who are being kidnapped, let's go rewind. They already admit that the government was trying to pay barbecue to align with them and barbecue wouldn't. So what is to say that the government wouldn't pay this gentleman to align with them, knowing that his gang focusing on kidnapping and this kidnapping, I'm, I'm just making my hypothesis because it seems like he has connections to Florida and, you know, and that's where a lot of Haitian immigrants come in, seeing tourists, seeing people getting money, seeing all that. And I think a thrive came from there. That's not a, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. But now I'm kind of seeing where this kidnapping tourists come from. I'm like, why do Haitian people want to kidnap? And we have, a, now it makes sense. It's a Pacific gang who's doing it. You see what I'm saying? And the people are saying, hey, you have to come and help us. We're being kidnapped. And you heard the police specifically say, we have to get okay for Moise to go and go investigate the kidnappers and then we can go in the street and be safe. Does it make sense? Is the picture coming together how bad the corruption is? Let's keep it moving. We're almost done getting to know these gangs and the different type of gangs and what they do. Vitalom is constantly connected to Haiti's worst acts. He was also named as having played a role in the murder of President Jovenel Moise in 2021. American His connected. crazed Barrier gang has been one of the main culprits for the epidemic of kidnappings in eastern and southern Port-au-Prince and carry out regular attacks on police stations, killing officers and stealing their weapons. And that's where him and Barbecue, because Barbecue got connections to the police, that's where the conflict come in. You see? Even by the standards of Haitian gang leaders, D. Lapley is not a cautious man. In November 2020, he went on national radio and revealed for all to hear that he had kidnapped the president of a major lottery organization in Haiti. Now, the executive was released safely within days, but it showed the type of leader T. Lapley is. He kidnapped a, a person from the lottery. They try to get some money. He is not afraid of taking risks or selling his services to the highest bidder. In 2020, when Barbecue created the G9 Alliance, T. Lapley did not let his Grand Ravine gang join, but he agreed to a ceasefire. That lasted about a year, until opposition political parties paid him off to be part of a coordinated attack on G9 territory in 2021. After See that, how he said the government paid him to attack G9? The government is part of all of this building up of the gangs. The, la the next part I'm going to show you is about how the guns is actually coming in. This is not just happening by itself. It's not just happening by itself. At T. Lapley became closely tied to T. Gabriel's GPEP coalition. The brash gang leader is also a close ally of Izo and his five second gang. Now, amid the usual brutality and kidnapping, T. Lapley's power comes from his gang's control over large stretches of the highway connecting Port-au-Prince with southern Haiti. Truck drivers have to pay extortion fees to be able to pass, vehicles and cargo are regularly hijacked, and all sorts of contraband passes through T. Lapley's territory. So now he's going to be the ambassador of transportation. This is what he's doing. You see how the gangs have sectioned off to do certain things, and the government has been using them to control the narrative. So we're going to show you about almost two hours. We're going to get start to wrap this up. I hope you guys got a great understanding of what's going on in Haiti and how remarkably similar to other countries in the fall.
Okay. Haiti, um, Haiti awaits security mission. Weapons tra traffic from U.S. gives gangs greater firepower. Okay. So let's get into this. And that's where we're going to end off. Haiti futures in limbo came in a way in the international security force. Allegedly, had a crick in my neck, y'all. American forces to stay in Haiti while lawmakers hold funding. Mm. While lawmakers hold the fundings. Position, position. Balance has further spiral in Haiti after Jim Henry resonated as a gang remained in control. The power of the gang leader in Haiti has threatened political leaders who would essentially planning to take the power. Gang leader Jim ties a barbecue vows to fight the country's control uh, at all costs while his cohorts destroy police stations and other state buildings. How many single family oh houses? Yeah. Oops. Forces to stay in Haiti as President Joe Biden has vowed to let the court now. Hold on one second. On March 13th, the U.S. deployed a special team of Marines to boost security in the U.S. Embassy in Haiti, aimed the ongoing crisis. Listen, because this is how the guns getting in. Meanwhile, U.S. lawmakers have refused to release millions of funds that Washington view as critical to help tackle spiral and violence in Haiti. There was money. That money that y'all donated is still sitting in Washington right now. U.S. lawmakers has put a hold on 40 million requests, $40 million requested by the U.S. State Department asking for a little more detail before clearing more funds. This is the funds that's there for Haiti. is not I promise you. The U.S. recently pledged an additional 100,000, uh, 100 million to the U.N. back multinational security force intended to help Haiti. So they're going to get the 100 million not to go to Haiti, but to go to the multinational security force that's going there. So the money, your tax money is going to be going there. OK, and the funds that's supposed to be released to Haiti. That's the funding that was already supposed to have been released to Haiti. Do you understand? But they were using like that money to basically control the government and, and use that to do government contracts. Do you understand? That's how we got the internet and stuff. It's still some of that earthquake money there. That's the funding that needs to be released. But Biden want to take a hundred million dollars more to back on back multi national security forces these are people who are just renegades that's where biden want to send your money to this is where he wants to send your money to so we can have more gangs in haiti yeah right sounds about right sounds about a coup meanwhile the former u.s official says that biden administration back in the unpopular henry government led to haitian latest crisis in the first place the messy, the mess, they messed it up deeply. They ride, they rode the horses to their doom 
It is the fruit of the choice we've made. This is the former ambassador of Haiti. They know that they fueled this by giving these rebels guns, by making um, packs with them. And the rebels as barbecue was like, I'm going to take your money and go do what I want to do. This is what they did with ISIS, allegedly. This is what they did in the other countries, okay? Now, you're getting to understand how countries get taken over. So in 2023, more than 8,400 8, people were reportedly killed, injured, or kidnapped, more than double the number reported in 2022. We already know how that was happening. There's a Pacific gang that was doing it. However, so don't blame it on the Haitian people. It's not us. It is a gang that has been fueled by the government in Haiti mm -hmm, to try to calm it down and control the people. As I told you, the police said we can't investigate any kidnappings unless we get the okay from the Haitian president. Yeah. So it gets a little deeper. So however, the Haitian pl Haiti plus more deeper, deeper into chaos, the U.S. stood firmly by the PM Henry. Let's give him more, more guns, more money. The same crooked government that is trying to do deals with these gangs that now they're calling the gangs terrorists. So if that didn't make sense, I'm not going to run this down in the hole. I do have one more that I can show you that I'm just going to let play out for the rest of the broadcast. OK, and that's going to break down a little bit more about how gang leader barbecue took over Haiti. If you would like to see that it is a CBC news special. So I'm going to let that play out. But I do want to say to you guys, all of the family that's on Rumble, I consider you family. I want to say thank you for allowing me, Grace Levi, to give you a little bit more background into my people, into my nation. Um, what's going on in the country of Haiti. And I hope that has expanded your horizons and let you see the connections of what's going on in Haiti, has happened in Venezuela, has happened in Syria, has happened in Iran, has happened in so many other places. And I just broke down the scenario of the escapades and the corruption that happened. So I brought this to you in real time. I love you guys. I will keep you up to date again. If you do want to donate to Haiti, donate to that person that you know. Help that person that you do know. I don't recommend you give that to any big funding such as Red Cross or anything because they already have funding waiting to be released. Okay, you heard it from Grace Levi and actually the news that told you it's funding still there, but they haven't trickled down to the people. And this is what they do in most countries. So I'm going to give you, um, we're going to sign off with you getting um, a better understanding of barbecue, what's going on with him and how these gangs take over areas. But now you understand how he's actually funded. Okay. A well, matter of fact, I think I did a good job, but we're going to play five minutes of this and then we're going to sign off. Hi, I'm Tamara Kendacker in for Jamie Poisson. Le gouvernement que Mabdija a prêté l'école immédiatement après l'installation du Conseil ça. On Monday, Ariel Henry, the unelected prime minister of Haiti, released a video announcing his resignation. He recorded that video not from inside his country, but from Puerto Rico. He's been prevented from returning to Haiti by an unprecedented surge in violence unleashed by a coalition of gangs who've come together to overthrow him. I just want y'all to hear that. He said he's in Puerto Rico. Why is he accepted in Puerto Rico, guys? Why is he in Puerto Rico? Hmm. Haiti is on a brink of becoming a failed state. A gangland rebellion is ripping through the Republic. The human toll, hunger, violence, and unrest has been unthinkable. The UN now says 15,000 people have been displaced over just the past week. Henri took over in 2021, following the assassination of President Jovenel Moise. Henri promised to restore order and to lead Haiti into new elections. 
Instead, the countries descended even further into violence and insecurity. The out of control violence escalating over the last week when the same gangs who once fought each other then banded together, attacking airports, police stations, the presidential palace, even prisons, releasing thousands of inmates into the streets. Now, as international diplomats scramble to cobble together a transitional government, Haiti remains gripped by hunger and bloodshed, and it's unclear who's going to lead the country out of this chaos. To understand how the crisis reached this point and what could happen next, I'm joined by Weedlore Marincor. He's the editor-in-chief of Aibo Post, a Haitian online news organization and a regular contributor to The Washington Post. 